All right, so for some reason, people on the internet seem to think that I'm some kind of productivity guru. I literally have no idea why. 157 words per minute, there we go, world record. Because even though I give the impression that I do lots of things, I am quite lazy and a bit of a waste man at heart. And so in this video, I'm gonna take you behind the scenes of my lazy productivity system, patent pending. And this is the system that I use to juggle all the things that I do, like being a doctor, a YouTuber, an entrepreneur, a podcaster, and a D-list celebrity. Let's start with the first component, and that is L standing for Lash. Now, uh, Lash, is basically how I view my calendar. My calendar is my lash. It basically is the whip, the lash, that tells me what I'm doing on any given moment of any given day. Honestly, I think most productivity systems in the world by effective people just boil down to using a calendar properly. So if you're struggling with your productivity for whatever reason, and you're not using your calendar to organize your life, you're probably doing it wrong. And if you start using a calendar, things will just go better. There's basically three main ways in which I use a calendar that I think you should use a calendar as well. The first one is time blocking. If I have to do something, if I want to do something, I put a block in my calendar when I'm gonna do the thing. For example, right now, there's a block in my calendar for filming this video. Later on in the day, I'm going out to dinner with some friends, so there's a block in the calendar for that. Obviously, there's blocks in the calendar for any time I have a phone call. And sometimes I even block in relaxation time on the calendar just to remind me to actually do it. The second way in which I use a calendar is that I live my life based on calendar invites. If a friend is inviting me to do something, then I have to create a calendar event for it and send them an email invite, which they're gonna accept. Because ultimately, if something is not in my calendar, it's just not gonna happen. And finally, third main reason for using a calendar is that you can then set out like protected blocks of time for deep work activities. So for me, every morning between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m., I have a protected block of time for writing my book. And that's great because in the morning, that's when my creative juices are flowing more regularly. And if I don't have that blocked off in my calendar, other random ass pointless things are gonna end up taking up that time. And right now, for me, writing the book is the most important thing I could be doing with my time. Therefore, it's protected in the mornings. If you're wondering about apps, the one I prefer to use on iOS devices is called Fantastical. It's a bit expensive, but like Google Calendar is a very good free alternative. So if you're not using a calendar, I think that's by far the most important part of any productivity system. And that is the lash. All right, next part of the lazy productivity system is A, which stands for agenda. Now this basically means a to-do list, but the way I approach to-do lists is different to how a lot of people do it. And that's because I'm a lazy waste man and therefore I don't really like it when I have a list of things that I have to do because then I feel like I'm beholden to my to-do list and it's just not nice. And then it makes ticking off tasks on my list feel as if I've got a boss and I have this like really deep desire to never have a boss in my life. Therefore, I don't really like the traditional way of managing a to-do list. And so instead for me, the way that I do it is that instead of a to-do list, I have a might-do list. And a might-do list is just that. I do have things written down, but they're not things I have to do. They're things that I can do if I really want to. And just that slight distinction makes me feel like I'm the boss, I'm in control, rather than that my to-do list is in control of me. Now with my to-do list, there is one important thing that I do every day. And that is the only thing that I absolutely have to do. And that is called my daily highlight. So every single day, I will define what is the one most important thing I have to do today. And that will go at the very top of my to-do list. And then everything else on my to-do list is just like things that I could do if I really wanted to. And sometimes I do lots of them and sometimes I do none of them, but it's all good because the only thing I have to do is my daily highlight. If you're wondering, I actually prefer to use paper for most of my to-do lists. And this is the analog system by Ugmunk. It's a bit overpriced, but it really is very nice. You get this little like wooden thing. And when you have your to-do list, you can like put it in front of you on paper and so you can see it every day and it's a little bit excessively priced, but hey, if you're a sucker for well-designed aesthetic productivity things like me, this is really, really good. I'll put a link in the video description and affiliate link if you wanna check it out with a bit of a discount. All right, so we talked about the lash and the agenda. Let's move on to Z, which stands for Zettelkasten. Zettelkasten is German for slip box and this is a note-taking and knowledge management system that's popularized by a chap called Lumen. And Lumen was particularly famous because he was like super, super productive. He wrote 70 books and over 400 articles over the course of his life. He had around 90,000 notes within his Zettelkasten slip box system, which I think this was like the 1800s or something. He did it on like slips of actual paper index cards. But the way that I use the Zettelkasten method is updated for the 21st century. And I use an app called Rome Research for my personal note-taking stuff. Yes, I still use Notion, but that's mostly for team related things and for keeping track of projects. Whereas Rome is my my personal note-taking app. And there's a lot of detail to go into with the Zettelkasten system, which I will do at some other point. But basically, it's like any time I consume something, if I read a book or an article or listen to a podcast, I will do my best to write down a few notes about the thing that I've just read in my own words in a series of Zettels. That's all a bit complicated. It's not really part of the productivity system as such. But there is one thing that I do within Room Research, within my note-taking app every single morning. And that's something that I call the morning dump. And the idea behind the morning dump is that every day I will start a new note in Rome 
and I will just write down whatever is on my mind. This is kind of similar to another exercise for creativity called morning pages. And the idea behind morning pages is that every morning you sit down and you write three handwritten pages, just a free writing, exploring whatever your thoughts are. But again, because I'm a bit of a waste man, I can't be bothered to actually sit down and write three pages by hand. And so the morning dump is a more permissive version of morning pages where the idea is, look, I just need to write down whatever is on my mind. I'm going to dump my brain out onto this page or onto this window in the app. And that's like genuinely quite helpful for me because usually I find that there's random stuff that's just been building up in my brain. Often there's things that I need to do or that I might want to do or appointments in my calendar or people I need to reply to. And so generally as I'm doing my morning dump, I realize, oh, I should do this and this and this, or I might want to do that. And then I will write it on my physical to-do list because then it's a, you know, it's part of the agenda. The other cool thing about using Roam is that I can automatically synchronize all of my highlights from Kindle predominantly, but also from Air Audio Podcast and also from Instapaper when I read articles. And that all synchronizes straight to Roam using an app called Readwise. And there's more details about that in a video up there somewhere called the five magical apps that changed my life. Now, the problem with Roam is that it's a little bit complicated to use and I have like so many other ways in which I use it. It's a bit too much to go into in a YouTube video, but I have all of those videos available on Nebula. Now, if you haven't heard, Nebula is an independent streaming platform that's built by me and a bunch of other creators that you might be familiar with. And Nebula is a good place for us to be able to put content like an in-depth tutorial series about how exactly how I use Roam without worrying about it being too niche for the YouTube algorithm. In fact, a few months ago, I even taught a weekend online course where I taught a hundred and something people how to use Roam research over the course of two or three hours. All the proceeds from that went to the Against Malaria Foundation, so we ended up raising about $8,000 for it. But if you couldn't attend that live session a few months ago, you'll find the recording of it over at Nebula again. But Ali, how do I sign up to Nebula? Well, I'm really glad you asked because the best way to sign up to Nebula is to actually make an account with CuriosityStream who are very kindly sponsoring this video. CuriosityStream is the world's leading documentary streaming subscription platform. And on CuriosityStream, they've got thousands of really high quality, high budget titles that you can choose from. One series in particular that I've enjoyed is called The Human Limit, which is a series of four really interesting episodes that explores the limits of human performance and super brains and the power of the human mind and how we can adapt to all these interesting conditions. And the really cool thing about CuriosityStream is that they love supporting independent creators. And so we've got a bundle deal with CuriosityStream, which is that if you sign up to a one year subscription of CuriosityStream, which is less than $15 for the whole year, you get free access to Nebula bundled with that. So for less than $15 a year, you get thousands of high quality, high budget documentaries. And you also get all of my original stuff on Nebula, along with originals from a load of my other creative friends like Tom Scott and Legal Eagle and Lindsay Ellis and Wendover Productions and Thomas Frank. If that sounds up your street, then head over to curiositystream.com forward slash Ali. And then when you sign up to an account with CuriosityStream, you'll get your Nebula details emailed to you. And then you can watch my entire workflow series where I tell you how I use Roam, how I use Notion, how I use all these apps to combine to build this lazy productivity system. And the final component of the lazy productivity system is I, which stands for inventory. Inventory basically means file management and archive. So in terms of file management, I use Google Drive for absolutely everything. My entire life is on Google Drive and I almost never store anything on my actual Mac in terms of physical files anymore. And so that means that whatever device I'm using, whether I'm using a MacBook or my Mac mini, or if I'm on a friend's laptop, or if I'm on my iPad, or even if I'm on this Microsoft Surface laptop that I've been trying recently, whichever device I'm on, I always have a way to access my files on Google Drive. So if you're currently not using a file backup system like Google Drive or OneDrive or Dropbox or iCloud Drive, you probably should be using something. I've tried all of them and Google Drive is the one that I prefer. The other element of my inventory system is actually Evernote. Now, <laughs> Evernote is a bit of an old fashioned app. It's sort of like the Microsoft of apps and people are like, well, why would you use Evernote? It's really old. But Evernote is still really good for using as a sort of archive system where anytime I get a letter, anytime I get anything I need to save, I just chuck it straight into Evernote because I know that whatever happens, come hell or high water, I think is the phrase, uh, whatever happens, Evernote will be there for my files. And so right now I'm in the process of applying for mortgages for various things and having to get bank statements and tax returns and like, you know, company house documents. And I'm just really glad that I've been taking photos of these for the last 10 years of my life and just chucking them into Evernote because they've got a really good like optical character recognition search function. So I can literally type in corporation tax and it will find all of the letters I've ever received about corporation tax because they're all somewhere in the Evernote thing. And the really nice thing about Evernote is that I actually don't need to worry about categorization or organization. Again, I'm a bit of a waste man, I'm quite lazy. I don't like the idea of having to put something in a folder. I just love the idea of being able to snap a photo of it, chuck it into Evernote wherever I want. And I know that using the search function, it's gonna be there for me when I need it. So that was the lazy productivity system, the lash, the agenda, the Zettelkasten and the inventory. If you're interested in more ways for being productive, you might like to check out this video over here, which is 
10 top tips for time management. And these tips interact with my lazy system. So you've got the tips from there, you've got the apps from here, and then you too will be a productivity grease monkey. So thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.